Hi, and welcome to Talking Shop. This is your one-stop shop for all your UK e-commerce news. With us here at EKM, I'm Mike from the marketing team, and this is Jesse. Hello. And uh, we're here to give you all the latest from the world of e-commerce, and we'll be covering in this month's episode... UK shoppers to have a more considered Christmas as inflation takes toll, says eBay. Shoppers to shun online retailers who charge for returns. 62% of UK online shoppers check a company's data privacy reputation before making a purchase. Two in five British brands consider switching to UK manufacturers as shipping costs rise. And over half of UK online consumers prefer guest checkout when shopping. Okay, let's tackle the first story, which I'm afraid, what we're in, we're in uh, September now. There's a bit of sleigh bells about this. I absolutely hate it when Christmas comes earlier and earlier and earlier and earlier and earlier every year. However, as we are in the world of e-commerce, of course, we want to be ahead of the game. We want to be thinking about Christmas already, don't we? Uh, Black Friday as well, of course. I booked to see Father Christmas yesterday. He oh. Yeah. <laughs> Is he in that much demand? I yes. suppose it's a very oh busy gosh, time no, of year for all him. All of the Friday, Saturdays in um, December are already sold out. Really? So we have to go on a Monday at 11 o'clock. Wow. Well, yeah. he, he is a very busy man. Yeah. He's a very so anyway, busy man. It's time to start thinking about Christmas. It's, it's the moment I hear Mariah Carey for the first time. It just sends me absolutely crazy, I'm, I'll be honest. However, uh, we will have to start thinking about offers that you might want to do for Christmas or getting your products in for Christmas. And also as well, of course, at the moment, we are looking at the, you know, the... Uh, the world of finance and what have you, new prime minister, um, and of course, looking at what shopping patterns will be like. Mm -hmm. Now, um, of course, many big companies are doing um, uh, sort of research on this. eBay adds uh, UK's latest report. They're looking and thinking that UK shoppers are going to be thinking earlier about their purchases, and they're going to be thinking about maybe more thoughtful gifts and higher quality. So they're saying that uh, research reveals that 32% of consumers are planning to start their Christmas shopping earlier than last year, lunatics, uh, with 29% planning to start before the end of August. Which we're now in September, so people have already started. Ah, I mean, please do in the comments put whether you have actually started your Christmas shopping, because I mean, I just can't, I can't face it. I, I was at Costco on Monday and I did pick some items up with the intention of Christmas gift. Have they already put a display out with Christmas stuff as well? Oh, or yeah. are these generic? Oh, long ago, yeah. Yeah, those, there's full on trees and, and the full <sighs> display. Yeah, it's Christmas. Oh no, oh gosh. Uh, such appetite uh, to get going is unsurprising given the current context, of course, with 30% of consumers credit uh, this, uh, uh, credit this early start uh, on the impact of inflation, of course, that we're getting. Of course, you think that prices are gonna rise, rise, rise. Prices are gonna go up towards Christmas, so get in early and, and get them cheaper. Uh, this one's um, the most interesting thing, I think, particularly if you're, you know, you're sort of craft your own um, products and what have you. Uh, some 56% plan to buy thoughtful gifts for friends and family this year. Uh, meanwhile, 30% say they plan to buy functional gifts and 23% will buy essential items for presents. So that gives you a bit of a, um, a, a bit of an overview of what type of things people will be looking at for this, uh, yeah. this Christmas. But I do like that thoughtful gifts. You know, if you do do personalized gifts, if that's yeah. your thing, then that might be really, you know, um, a, a real fruitful year for you, hopefully. Yeah, even, I think so. I think when, it, when it's a gift that really, truly does come from a place of, of thought, of, from the heart, if you've not spent as much, it, it, yeah. but it means more. So I think as people are trying to sort of tighten their pocket strings. Yeah. Is that the word, pocket strings? Purse strings. Purse strings, tighten the purse strings. Do you have strings, strings on your pockets? Um. It's a very old pair of pants. <laughs> So uh, those pocket strings, right? <laughs> um, but as people are trying to, you know, tighten the budget up, they're yes. going to be looking for, you know, what are the smaller amounts that we can acceptably spend on gifts, and those things <laughs> that are more from the heart are going to are going to pass that. the bar. What I think. A, what is the amount that I can What's acceptably? What's the least amount that I can possibly spend on my mother-in-law? <laughs> I love my mother-in-law, and if you're watching this, you're a great one. I do think that a personalised gift with someone's name on, you know, sort of a. Uh, there's a good couple of quid added onto that. Just, you know, that you can spend less on a personalized gift than you can on something that's not personalized and it pass off as more thoughtful. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so yeah, so if you're uh, looking at, you know, your marketing and ad spend, well, there's good research out there to say that you might have a very good Christmas if you do the more higher end quality uh, personalized gifts uh, with your e-commerce shop. Uh, right, shoppers to shun online retailers who charge for returns. Ooh. I read this and I thought this is so tricky. Mm, it really is. As a business, as you'll know, as a, if you're an online shop owner, to offer free returns 
is an expense. It's going to eat into your margin. It's something you're going to have to factor in. It then could be very hard to predict, predict your, your, your revenue per month, etc. if something then gets returned in the next and difficult. Really difficult. As a sole trader, very difficult. Now, this is saying that nearly half, 47% of consumers wouldn't shop with an online retailer that charges for online returns. I think that's harsh. Um, and I do think that some consideration is given by people when they're online shopping that this is not your ASOS, your Zara, your, you know, big fashion yeah, brands. Yeah, and I think as well it does maybe have a little bit to do with like the type of the product and the price point. Yeah. So if it's a really expensive item and the cost of a return is maybe like a fiver, you might mm. think, well, at least I'm getting yeah. my money back. But if it's, you know, a £10 item and you've got to pay nearly £5 of to course. return it. So I think there, there's a lot of give and take there when people are making those decisions. But like you said, I think people are more willing to understand that um, a shop that's actually owned by a, a small business owner mm. likely isn't going to be able to offer free returns. And I think they do understand that. Yeah, they are going to have to foot that, that bill, aren't they, really? Yeah. I mean, for example, <clears throat> the girlfriend's just had to send... <clears throat> Sorry. Fiance. <coughs> <coughs> that's it. She's, she's put a spell on me for not saying fiance. <laughs> she's, wherever she is, she's heard me refer to her as girlfriend, when she's now fiance. Particularly in the context of this story, it's particularly um, poignant. But girlfriends had to send her um, yeah, wedding ring to his um, fiance. <laughs> fiance. The fiance has had to send her wedding ring back um, to be adjusted. Um, and obviously, this guy he he makes these this jewelry himself. So mm. we're quite happy to pay the insurance for it to be sent back because this is a high quality item. And look, I realise that. You know, he is selling a very specialist product, yeah. so you don't want to burden people with that price. You know, we're, we're a pro business and we want them to do well. Um, so it's something to consider. Ways you can help prevent this, I guess, would be really good product descriptions, yeah. good measurements if they're clothes, Absolutely. making sure that people can really make their mind up at the, at the purchasing stage that this thing will, will fit them, that it's right for them, accurate pictures. And that hopefully should stem, you know, any sort of returns that are needed, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think uh, clothing, I think, is probably the, the worst hit industry by this. Yeah. And people buying things just for the, oh, I'll just try it on, and if it doesn't fit, I'll just send it back. I think that has become sort of like the mentality. Yeah. To, I do it Fast fashion. Fast fashion. Yeah, it's, um, it's not healthy sometimes, is it? Okay, next up, we've got 62% of UK online shoppers check a company's data privacy reputation before making a purchase. Now, we spoke about this before, absolute rubbish. Um, I think there's a, I may have got the wrong end of the stick here, but 62% of people are not going on your data privacy policy at the bottom of your website through that little link. Um, no chance, there's no, that's not happening. No, um, <laughs> what the headline could talk about would maybe be the amount of people checking for other trust signals, like looking at your reviews, checking that you're a verified website to check yep. out from. But I really don't think that many people, like you said, are gonna be looking through the, your data privacy policy. No. It's just not happening. No, not, not at all. Um, as much as we like to think that, you're not going to go on to Trustpilot and it's gonna be saying stuff like, I was really happy with the way they dealt with GDPR. Um, I really, I really don't see that uh, being the case. But we, we were talking about um, uh, cookies, weren't we? And it's, it's encouraging to see that so many people accept sort of personalised cookies. We had 53% of people accept all the cookies. What huh? do you do? Uh, reject. Do you? <laughs> if there's a reject I'm all button, about the cookies. I'm going to hit reject. I, I don't know why. I just like that I have the power to do so, so I'm mm. going to do it. Yeah. Don't know why. I don't know why, but I'm a sucker for... I, I'm quite happy that, to then move on to social media platform or Google and have personalized ads. I always think it's going to feed me an ad for something. It might as well be something that I Yeah, just, I, I see where you're coming from. I do, yeah. I do prefer to have personalized ads over something that has nothing to do with me. But also, if, if I see the buttons and it's accept and then reject, I'm going to hit reject. Yeah. And if it's accept and then manage, I'm just going to hit accept because that's a lot of work. Yeah. So yeah, 62%, not so sure. Um, other sort of stats that we can pull out here, this is research by Captera UK. 77% uh, want to see regulation that control online companies' use of their personal data. I would hope that would be 100%. However, um, some people just really don't want any regulation on anything whatsoever, which is fair enough, that's what they want. Uh, and 69% um, of shoppers will agree to share their personal information with a company or brand if it means getting better and more efficient products or services. So basically, you know, give a great user experience and customer experience and journey when, when you know, that someone makes their first um, purchase with you and they'll be far happier to trust 
their data with you and the look of your website will you know, be um, play a part in that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Right, on to, um, now this one's interesting, two in five British bands, uh, two in five British brands <laughs> consider switching to UK manufacturers uh, as shipping costs rise. We've spoken about this quite a lot in terms of this globalisation of retail where we all like to order our products from China and sell them on or direct from China, what have you, um, that people are becoming um, both consumers and yourself as you know retail operators and, and shop owners becoming more conscientious of buying those products nearer home you know mm -hmm. lower carbon footprint but most importantly for your margin and and what have you and for business purposes as it comes home the less it's going to cost in terms of shipping yeah which it makes it very interesting so this is saying two in five are considering switching um and also uh that um 38% who said the biggest boost for their business would be to move manufacturing operations from overseas to the UK in order to avoid import challenges and rapidly rising freight costs. Uh, so there's so many different factors in shipping now at the moment. You've got things that have changed obviously recently due to things like Brexit, the, the war in Ukraine. There's so many different factors that are um, giving headaches to people um, getting products over to us. So the more local it is, the easier the whole process is, I guess. Um, but of course, you're adding cost on there potentially with a higher quality product but yeah we've just said in the opening story of, of talking shop this week people might be looking for a higher quality you know um good um yeah. goods this 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 year so so it's some good and some bad the bad of it being is it's going to discourage brands that are just starting out from looking to ship their goods across mm. in uh, into other markets you know if they're trying to stay a bit more localized brands as they're first starting out are going to just concentrate on selling to yeah in the uk where um as we've talked about in previous episodes episodes of talking shop the u.s market is very interested in british goods yeah and, and it could be a real hindrance to new businesses small businesses that could really be getting great sales by going across the pond yeah um, but now might be nervous to do so just because of the cost of doing business yeah exactly if you're a supplier and you're wanting to get those products overseas to be then sold in retail premises overseas like that's going to hit you the other way you know there's a there's a plus and a, there's a bonus and a negative isn't there um positive and negative to all these things so uh, we'll keep an eye on that and also uh, finally over half of uk online consumers prefer guest checkout when shopping you know just literally if you look check out the ekm blog We've written, um, they've got a new blog post, just sort of three ways to declutter your checkout. Uh, and one of them is, you know, don't ask people for too much information right up front, particularly for the first purchase. You know, no one wants to be entering information after information before they've even bought the actual item. And this just supports it. It's something that, you know, many of us in marketing have known for a while that, you know, you have to have the option of a guest checkout. Absolutely. You, yeah. It really is imperative. I know sometimes that feels divisive and counterproductive in terms of getting people's information and remarketing trust us it isn't you know you can do those steps after they've checked out as a guest um so some 56 percent of online shoppers prefer to check out as a guest uh, when making a purchase with a new online retailer as according to captera as well the research reveals that 85 percent say that it is is, is somewhat important 48 percent um are, are very important and 30 percent 37% for companies to offer a guest checkout option in order to gain their trust as new customers. Um, so this is, this is it's, it's important um, that you do it. I mean, obviously you might be a trade, um, sort of building supplies merchants. Obviously yeah, you have well a slightly you need to log model. in and those sorts of things. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I totally agree with what this article is saying. I know personally, I do prefer a guest checkout experience if it's a website that I'm a first time shopper. Mm. Um, but the things that tempt me back if I have done a guest checkout is going to be something like you could have earned this many points with your purchase today. Yeah. Um, so having things like maybe a loyalty point scheme and um, bringing people in at the end of the checkout experience and encouraging them to enter their details at that point so that you are still getting that information, mm -hmm. um, but still removing the barrier to purchase. Yeah. I mean, making that checkout process as smooth as possible. Um, I mean, I've got an example of this happened to me the other day. It's a, a little bit different, but I went to Nando's. I sat okay. in at Nando's, and to order, you had to create an, a Nando's oh, account no, to yeah. order from your table. And I nearly got up and walked out, except for I really wanted a Nando's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it was just... Yeah. It's, it's become um, really common, I think, that people are really trying to get those details, build those email lists, and so they're going to sort of force your hand and try to get you to, to sign up. And I think it really is a negative experience for the consumer. Yeah. So, 
I do as well. I, I totally agree. Remember when we were in lockdown as well? That that happened a lot, didn't it? That's that's where this whole order from your table really yeah, started, didn't yeah. it? With the QR code, and you would go to some places demand that you that you know you um you know you entered your email and that's something you're like, why do you need to? Why do you need yeah. to give me that email? You know, it just didn't. And that was under the guise of sending you your receipt, I think, wasn't it? Really, yes. but um. Uh, so very important and um, you know the, the work is always what you can do after in, in that instance uh, right I think we've covered quite a lot there's a lot to get your teeth into there about do's and don'ts and tips and, and what have you and um, you know hopefully we as we look towards your Black Fridays and your Christmases we start to see an uplift in e-commerce and people sort of are getting out there and spending their money which uh, fingers crossed for anyway uh, until next month bye